Charlotte. This is Lydia, the lifestyle coach, helping women to be free from their crazies with food, like binge eating, bulimia, overeating, the things that just make us not feel good and not eat normally, and just to be free from that and to have a life where you're in the driver's seat. And so that's what we do here. And there is an amazing woman that we get to talk to you today. She has just been such a delight and has just blossomed over the time that she's been in the program. And I'm so excited for you guys to get to know her and her story. So Yuko, welcome to the show. Hi. Yay. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's so fun to have you here, and I'm so excited for everyone to hear your story and for us to celebrate you. So, first of all, like, let's just start out with when we were first connected, like, mm -hmm. when we talked to each other for the first time, what were the things that you were sort of struggling with most? Like, where were you mm -hmm. before you started um, with us working together? Okay, um, so before um, I got in touch with you, I have been struggling with binge eating for the past 10 years. And it was just, I just felt so crazy around food. I felt like I couldn't control what I was putting in my mouth. And all of this started um, 10 years ago when I went on my very first diet which was like a crash diet. So I cut out all snacks and I, I was hardly eating. Um, and I wasn't overweight at that time. So just by going on that diet, I lost six pounds. And just by losing six pounds, I became underweight. And um, the reason why I went on that diet in the first place was because of this one comment that I received from this one individual and to this day I really don't know why I asked her this but I asked her if she thought my face was round and she said yeah it's round it's like round like a balloon <laughs> you know I know that she didn't mean it in a bad way at all like she didn't have any ill intentions but you know I took that as meaning that I was fat and Back then, I thought, okay, so if I'm fat, then that means that must mean that I'm unattractive. So that was why I decided to go on the diet. And um, I didn't know what I was doing, basically. I didn't know how to lose weight like in a healthy manner. Um, and so I just cut out my calories. And then I was on the diet for a few weeks. And... Uh, during that same year, my family and I, we went to Europe for vacation. And so, you know, when you go on vacation, you eat more than you normally would. And so it was my first time being in Europe. So I was like, okay, so I'm just going to eat whatever I want during this vacation. And when I go home, then I'll just get back on track with my diet. But that never happened because I found that when I went back home, I wasn't able to eat normally anymore. I was just so out of control with food. Like I didn't know what was happening to me because I have never had problems with eating before, but now I wasn't able to control it. Like I had like insatiable hunger um, and I, I would just binge on tons and tons of foods and I became so ashamed of my actions and I, I and I was just so confused too because I didn't have any problems before but now I didn't seem to be able to control anything that I put in my mouth and so I struggled with that for 10 years and after a few years of that I also developed some bulimic tendencies. I don't believe that I had like full-blown bulimia because I didn't purge after every single binge, but um, I have like purged a handful of times. Um, but my way of purging wasn't self-induced vomiting. It was through over-exercising and starving myself the next day or, you know, abusing laxatives. And that absolutely did nothing but to make my binge eating even worse. And, um, and so I did 
Sorry, I'm like going on and on. Oh, this is, your story is so beautiful and so amazing. So, I mean, just to bring awareness to a couple of things here, because mm -hmm. some people don't know this that are, that are watching this, that dieting is the number one reason why eating disorders develop. I don't know if, if you knew this when you were dieting, Yuko, but I know that when I went on my first diet, I had no idea about how much dieting just wrecks your relationship with food. And yeah. it's something that like we don't talk about nearly enough. So anyone within the sound of our voice, be aware. <laughs> I'm actually doing a series right now called Debunking Diets, where we talk about just like how dieting makes those crazy people, right? So it's like yeah. there are a couple of elements here just already that are so useful. So one, just like the dangers of dieting, how it mm -hmm. totally wrecks, you know, that normalcy with food. And right. then, you know, just all the messages in our society about like, oh, well, if you're fat, then you are unattractive and you have to do yeah. something and you have to change your body. And mm -hmm. there's all of these sorts of messages that promote that dieting. So thank you so much for sharing. I mean, just those aspects are so important to realize. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you came back from your trip, like it was 10 years after that of mm -hmm. just, you know, binge eating, you know, some bulimic tendencies. Mm -hmm. um, and with those 10 years, like, how is this impacting your life? Like what was sort of like a typical binge for you? Like how often were you binging? What was your life like after those 10 years? Oh, um, so during those 10 years, I typically, I would binge about four times a week and every single binge was a pretty big one, definitely above 5,000 calories, close to 8,000 calories each binge. And that would go on for, yeah, four days for, for, on average, it would go on for like a week. And then after a week of binging, I would tell myself, okay, I have to get back on track. I can't keep doing this. And then I wouldn't binge for the next week, but then something stressful or something sad or something like that happened and then I would binge again for a whole week and then I would get back on track and I wouldn't binge for another week and it was like this binge non-binge binge non-binge non cycle that just kept going and going and I didn't know how to get out of it it was just like this vicious cycle that I was stuck in and I was and I was really trying my best to find a solution to this. I was doing, you know, research. Um, I was reading a lot of books, but like nothing was helping. Yeah. So what were some of the things that you tried? It sounds like, you know, mm -hmm. reading books. It sounds like, you know, internet research. Like mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you were trying to do that, mm -hmm. that weren't effective, that weren't helping the behavior? Yeah, so um, I started following um, eating disorder recovery blogs and um, people would post their experiences with binge eating disorder and how they're, how they're still struggling or how they recovered and I would read their posts and I also got help from professionals like psychotherapists, um, a homeopath, and I also went to go see like a diet doctor, but none of them helped because they, so um, especially the uh, psychotherapist, she told me that I developed binge eating because I wasn't able to cope with my problems well. And I binge eat to deal with my stress or I binge eat because I have some unresolved like like trauma from childhood but that really didn't make sense with me because it was so all of a sudden that I started binge eating like you know before that before going on the diet I had no problem and so I was like it, it really didn't resonate with me and I also read books about like binge eating like I did a lot of research online but nothing seemed to be working for me yeah. And I know that feeling of like trying so hard, right? It's like you're doing so much. You're trying to get all the help and it's just like, it's not for lack of trying, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, it sounds like you were doing so much Yuko to try to fix this problem. Like mm -hmm. you said, like nothing, nothing was helping. 
Um, what, what other ways was this impacting your life? Like financially, how much was it costing to binge? Like mm -hmm. how was it just impacting the way that you felt emotionally? Well, financially, I wasted so much money because for every single binge, I would spend about 15 to 20 dollars and that would be like four times a week. Um, and I can't really do the math right now, but for 10 years, it was 15 to 20 dollars per binge for about four times a week. And I'm sure that would amount to like huge amount of money. And I also spent money on the psychotherapist, the homeopath. Oh, and I also went to go see an acupuncturist. Um, but that absolutely did nothing as well. Um, and not even thinking of all of those things that you were, you know, spending money on to try to fix mm -hmm. this. I just did the math real quick, right? So it's like, so like $20 a binge, four times a week. So that's $4,160 a year. Oh and over the 10 years, that's $41,600. So with all of this going on, a lot of times we don't realize like mm -hmm. just how many different ways, because we, we're just trying to get along, right? We're just trying to like, okay, well, I'm just going to work on it again today and I'm going to make another promise. Like I'll never do it again. And then it happens again. Mm -hmm. And so I sort of like what's happening and what's adding up. So mm -hmm. I'm so proud of you for like looking at and getting that clarity, right? Of like what was happening. Mm -hmm. And then for the emotional cost, I like lost any confidence that I had. I couldn't talk positively about myself at all. Like every time I looked at myself in the mirror, all I could see were the things that were wrong with me. My stomach was so fat, my legs were so fat. Like I could not say anything nice about myself. And I know that because of my struggle with binge eating, I lost so many opportunities to connect with new people, experience new things. Like I would turn down offers from my friends to go out because I was just so bloated from binging that I didn't want to be seen by anybody or I didn't want to go out. I just wanted to be by myself. I like isolated myself. So I know that I missed out on so, so much. And yeah, my self-esteem, my self-confidence, they were just, it was pretty much non-existent. And because I couldn't think positively about myself, I also became like this jealous, negative person. And I couldn't really think positively about others as well. And that made me hate myself even more. And it was just like, this vicious, vicious cycle, like he, like mentally, physically, it was, it was horrible. It was bad. Yeah, absolutely. I can absolutely appreciate that. And I know that's something that I hear so much from women is like, and men that struggle mm -hmm. with this. It's like the person that they're becoming because of this, it really feels dissonant with who they are. They're like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm not this way. Like I, I used to be more optimistic or I used to be more confident mm -hmm. and just the way that you sort of wears away at that true you. I know mm -hmm. it's a really difficult piece. Um, yeah. Because before I developed in dating, whenever something like stressful happened or whenever something um, didn't go my way or some, something happened, I would try to like just move forward. I would improve upon it. But like when I started struggling with binge eating, I just became apathetic. Like I was like, okay, it's, it's whatever. Like I just, I couldn't deal with anything, you know, because binge eating just got in the way. Yeah. yeah. And I know after like, like 10 years, mm -hmm. like that's, that's so much and you were giving so much to this and that it's not a fun place to be at all. So anything on, on that side of it, just kind of where you were at before your experience that, that you just feel like it's important to share? Um, I think for relationship wise too. Um, so I couldn't really be myself or commit to my relationships fully because yeah, because binge eating got in the way and 
I couldn't really tell my boyfriend about my binge eating because I felt ashamed. I was so embarrassed. I was scared of what he was going to think. And I, I just really couldn't be myself in the relationship. And I know I couldn't give all of myself to the relationship. And yeah, that, um, that decreased my self-confidence as well. And yeah, I just feel like binge eating, it just affected every aspect of my life so negatively. And yet I didn't know how to recover from it. And it was just so, so frustrating. Yeah, absolutely. And from that place, I'm so glad that we <laughs> found each other. Yay. <laughs> so, I mean, it was so amazing to, you know, connect with you and, you know, Yuko, we got to talk and you qualified you. for the program and tell, tell us where you're at now. Like, how do you feel differently than you used to? Oh my gosh. I mean, like a totally different place now. Like I can't believe that I'm like actually here sitting and talking with you because while I was struggling, struggling with binge eating, I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Like there were so many times where I just said, okay, this is how my life is going to be from now. Like, I've tried so many things to overcome this, yet I haven't been able to overcome it successfully. And yeah, this is just going to be my life because eating is something that that we need to survive. And I was struggling with that very thing. And, you know, I just kind of thought, okay, this is just my destiny. It's, you know, it's how it's going to be. But, but I'm just, I'm just so happy. Like, I can't believe I'm sitting here and saying that I'm free. And I'm just so grateful that I was able to meet you. Like, I'm just so, so thankful. And um, how I met you was through Katherine Hansen's Brain Over Binge book. And when I read that book, it really resonated with me because she didn't talk about how binge eating is about, you know, not being able to cope with stress, but it's really about a habit. Like this, it's about um, the problem in your brain, like, the wiring problem in your brain and that really like made sense to me and I did a lot of I did research on brain over binge and I started um looking for videos about that on YouTube and that's where I found your videos <laughs> and then like <laughs> I like binge watched all of your videos because they made so much sense to me and like your humor like I was laughing out loud watching some of your videos and I knew like this was it. That is so awesome. I'm so glad that we connected and that you, you know, intellectually, right? It's like these principles mm -hmm. make sense to you and then you were able to see kind of like, okay, so here are these videos and they resonate as well. So what was it mm -hmm. that, I mean, after seeing the videos, after, you know, reading, reading Brain Over Binge, mm -hmm. what was it that made you want to, to get help? Like to, to work with me, like, Mm -hmm. What was that deciding factor that made you want to move forward and get more support? Oh, it was definitely like the fact that I really couldn't go on with my life anymore with binge eating. Like I have wasted like 10 years of my life to binge eating and I was just so ready to just overcome it and move on with my life. And I've tried, like I said, I've tried like so many things in the past and none of them resonated with me, none of them worked, but this, like Brain Over Bench, your videos, they all really made sense to me, and I think I was lucky because in college, I had to take one, um, I had to take a course that was on brain development, and I knew, I had a little bit of background in how the brain works, and so like, so knowing that and watching your videos, like it really made sense to me. And I, and yeah, I knew this was it. And I knew I couldn't go on binge eating like that for the rest of my life. 
I knew I wanted to start a family. I wanted to, you know, create more meaningful relationships. And I wanted to get back my confidence and get back my life ultimately. Yeah. Absolutely. So give us an example of like, when we started working together, Yuko, what was one of the very first things that you remember happening that was just like, this is amazing. Like, no way. Like one of those first like wins that came up for you. Oh, of course. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, I think it was, so oh, before when I was uh, struggling with binge eating, I would binge whenever I was home alone or I would binge when I was stressed, or I would binge when whenever something sad happened. And so when we started working, um, and you taught me the principles, um, so something stressful happened. So I had a stressful day at work, and had it been me like a couple or even a month ago, then I would have binged, but I implemented your principles. I called out the chatter, and then I didn't binge. Like, and that was, yes. <laughs> that was so incredible for me because I would have definitely been for sure, like 100%. But by implementing the principles that you taught me, like I was able to overcome the chatter. And I was like, this works. <laughs> <laughs> that is so awesome. And just now, like, you, what is your relationship with food like now? Oh, now it's, oh my gosh, it, it is so different. Like, it's like night and day. Now food is like no longer a big deal to me. Like, I don't think about food all the time. Whereas before I would be thinking about food, like literally the whole day, like what I'm going to eat for lunch what snacks I'm going to eat when I get home. Oh, what if I binge today? Like, but now it's just, I eat whatever I feel like eating and I just go on with my day. Like, I don't think about it. Like if I feel like eating a piece of chocolate tart, I eat it and I enjoy it and just move on. <laughs> it's just, it's no big deal. For me, and for me to be able to say that it's like, it's like a miracle because before I would eat like a sweet treat and then I would start thinking, oh my goodness, I shouldn't have ate that. Now I'm going to get fat and I have to do this and that. And I would go crazy and that would ultimately lead me to binge. But now it's just, I just eat what I feel like eating and I just go on with my day. <laughs> <laughs> that is beautiful and like you said like just that normal eating just eating something going on with your day having part of a piece of candy and just moving on like those things used to feel totally impossible right yeah for sure like at work someone if someone gave me a treat before I would be like oh no, no I can't have this because then I'd be fat or whatever but now if someone offers me a treat out of nowhere I'd be like oh, okay yeah sure that looks good and I eat it and that's it like okay. and that's all <laughs> <laughs> so awesome how have things changed for you just like mm -hmm. just emotionally and mentally like having having more of your your brain back not thinking about food mm -hmm. all day like how has that changed things for you oh my gosh I have so much more mental energy now now that I'm not thinking about food from the moment I wake up to the moment I fall asleep like I can think about things that anything that I want other than food and my confidence has come back but that's not to say that I'm confident all the time but my confidence has definitely like increased now I can look in the mirror and Hey, like, hey, I look pretty today, <laughs> or I look good today. Like, I know for sure when I was struggling with binge eating, I could not do that. And I wouldn't dare to wear like a dress or a skirt because I'd be so like self-conscious and I would think, oh, I look so fat, I shouldn't be wearing that or I can't wear that. But now like I I wear skirts and I wear dresses and it's like it's I'm just so much more confident and yeah, I, I just have mental energy to think about what I want to think about now. 
<laughs> it's such a beautiful thing. I love that. And I find that, I mean, really the reason, mm -hmm. one big reason why I do what I do is because I love seeing amazing people like you who want to live their lives in a more full way. And like most of the time, the main reason, the main reason that's holding back your life is just this thing with food. Like everything else is fine. Everything else is good. And then there's like this food thing. That's like a huge issue. So getting that out of the way is like mm -hmm. this amazing freedom because mm -hmm. then you get to fill your life with the things that you want, with the things mm -hmm. that you care about. And I see people go on to live amazing lives because they have the space and the capacity to. So it's been so mm -hmm. fun to see you just blossom and step into that confidence and do what you want and wear a skirt if you want to like all of this is about just doing what you want right mm -hmm. yeah exactly and then when I was struggling I used to be scared of the weekends because that's when I would most likely binge but now I don't binge on the weekends anymore like I haven't binged for I believe like a month now which is like crazy for me and now I have the weekends to do what I want to do. Whereas before it was taken up by binging. So I would just stay at home, isolate myself. But now I can go out like I, I want to. Like it's, it's amazing. That's so beautiful. And what, what gives you the, the confidence like for moving on, like for the future, right? You've got like your beautiful life to live. Like mm -hmm. what makes you feel confident that you can be done with the binging or even if you know you feel wobbly or struggle in the future like mm -hmm. what gives you confidence moving forward well i think it's i know now how to overcome the chatter so for sure i i could still and i still do get the chatter to binge but now i know how to deal with it whereas before i would get all anxious and nervous and i'd be like oh no 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 no, no. the chatter is coming the chatter is here but now I know how to deal with that. So even when I do get wobbly, I know to call out the chatter. I know that the urge to binge is not really me. And I, just, I know how to deal with it. So um, I believe it was like last Wednesday, I had um, an extra serving of spaghetti for dinner. And after eating the second serving, I became pretty full. And the familiar chatter came and it said, okay, you ate too much, so you might as well binge now. And I would have definitely binged had it been me like two months ago, but I knew how to deal with that. So I just called out the chatter. I said, isn't that interesting? And then <laughs> I was able to overcome the chatter and just go on with my night. That's so lovely. And like you said, just go on, go on with your night, move on with your day. Like that's a main, I think, piece of freedom mm -hmm. that we see is just like, just being able to move on because mm -hmm. when we're food obsessed, anything that happens with food just kind of snowballs throughout the day. Right. And it feels worse and worse and a bigger, bigger deal. And with this, like food is just literally not a big deal. It's just an instance of like, this is a thing that happened with food. Now I'm just moving on with my day. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> what else for you just makes you feel free? How else are you free right now? How else are things different mm -hmm. for you on this side of it? Oh man, I have to say like everything, like from, you know, my getting my mental energy back, getting my confidence back, like just knowing that nothing can make me binge unless I choose to. And the phrase that you always say, you, I can eat whatever I want, whenever I want, as much as I want. And I think that really helped me to solidify my uh, freedom as well, because if I'm not restricting myself, then I wouldn't feel that compulsive need to eat everything right now, because there is no last chance. Like I can have whatever I want, whenever I want, as much as I want. And just knowing that, just having that knowledge and having the knowledge to overcome any chatter, any binge urge has just helped me so much, like, in every aspect of my life, like, for sure. Like, 
I just feel free. Like it's nothing can make me vent. It's so beautiful. I love that. That's freedom, right? You're doing what you want. Nothing can make you do otherwise. Like, mm -hmm. congratulations on being a free woman. I am so, <laughs> so happy for you. It is such an amazing thing. And I love, you know, seeing, seeing this journey. And I mean, Yuko, you have done the work, right? So I know that, you know, intellectually, a lot of times we understand these things. So it's like intellectually, like, oh yeah, I can eat whatever I want. Or intellectually, like, oh yeah, like I can just call it the chatter. But a lot of times the things that we understand intellectually, as we practice them, we still don't see them click for us. Like we still don't see them in practice. So I just want to say how proud of you I am for just being so open to all of the coaching, right? Like we've been working closely together and back and forth. And it's like, you intellectually understood these things before, right? Mm -hmm. But you were totally open to all the ways that I told you how to adjust so that you could really know what to do and get this like knowing in your bones of like, oh, nothing can make me binge. Like, I don't know if you remember when you first told me, you're like, wait, no, I really, really get it now. Like nothing can make me binge. <laughs> and that's just so fun to see, like when you really have that knowing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Beautiful. So what, what advice would you give? Like with somebody who, who is struggling, who isn't sure what to do, who was in a position like you were of like, mm -hmm. you know what, like I, I'm trying things, but nothing's working. And like, I'm just, mm -hmm. you know, in, in this pattern, in this habit. Um, what, what would you say to somebody who was who you were a while ago? Yeah. Well, I would like to tell them to not give up to not give up hope because there is no one in exception that can overcome binge eating like everyone can overcome it and i know how hopeless it can be how depressing it can be but just know that you can like without exception you can overcome it and even if you have ups and downs like I know I did, like I gave, I sent the Marco Polo video to you, like crying, saying like, I can't do this. And so I know there, there's going to be ups and downs, but just know that anybody, you can overcome it because we already have like the unlimited potential and the power to overcome it. So armed with that and the knowledge of the principles that you teach, there's like nothing standing between you and freedom. Like anybody can overcome it for sure. So I just want to tell everyone just don't lose hope. You can do it. There's nothing stopping you. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. And just congratulations. It's so fun to see you free and to see all of these women just going free into the world when they get the help that they need, when they get principles that work. Like, we really can be done with this. Like, done, done, done. And I had years and years of bulimia myself, and it's just like, Mm -hmm. Done. I'm free. And like, nothing can make me binge, just like you said, right? It's like, it's all up to me. And that mm -hmm. knowing and that understanding and getting to that place, that, that's freedom. So mm -hmm. I'm so happy that you've shared your story. And it's so fun that we get to celebrate you. And thank you for being open and you know, authentic in yourself. Like, you are an amazing woman. And I'm so happy that others get to hear your story as well. So Yuko, anything else on your mind that you wanted to, to share that would kind of make our conversation complete? Um, just one last thing that I wanted to say was, you know, um, to not let people who make comments about your body or your weight, like dictate how you see yourself and how you um, perceive your health work because um, during the, those 10 years I have received so many negative comments regarding the way I look like people often told me that I look different from my from the rest of my family because I wasn't skinny someone actually said I'm oh, sorry um, the I must be the lazy one out of the family because I'm not skinny and I have been called names I've been called ugly because of my weight so just don't let those negative comments from other people like, determine how you see yourself because 
it's not a reflection of you, but a reflection of that person who's making that comment. So just ignore them because you're worth it. Like you're, the way you look, your weight does not determine your self worth. So that's what I really want to say. That is such an important message. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I mean, I think that it really starts with us. I mean, like, mm -hmm. there's so many people who, I, there's so much negativity around just, you know, mm -hmm. body image, especially for women, like it's a huge mm -hmm. thing. And so for us to just all individually be aware of, you know, are we on either side of it, right? Are we mm -hmm. saying like, oh, you know, like commenting on someone's weight because we feel like it's not the right size on mm -hmm. either end of the spectrum or praising people for like, I heard an amazing wow. TED talk the other day from a woman when she was saying, you know, it's like people who didn't even know me when I started losing weight, they said they were so proud of me. They said it was the most amazing thing. And it's like, why do we give so much praise yeah. when people's bodies change? You know what I mean? Or so much, you know, negativity when people's bodies change. And it's like, how about we all just like authentically say, good happy things about each other you know it's like our weight our size is not a big deal and it really can impact us so much to be hearing these comments and i'm so glad you brought that up yuko like that is an amazing message like if you take one thing from today like listen to yuko's beautiful words <laughs> thank you Thank you so much for being on, for sharing your story. Um, and you guys, if you want to uh, be able to walk this same journey, like if you are struggling and you want to be able to be free and you know what to do, um, we have some free sessions available right now. So free 45 minute sessions where you can get that first step to being done with the disordered eating. You can go to lydiawenty.com slash apply. And if there are openings, I would snatch one up like right now. They usually go pretty quickly. So I would go and see what's left um, and just explore. Just get that first step toward freedom. And then we can go from there. And if you qualify for the program, it would be really fun to see you be free as well. So this is Yuko and Lydia, the lifestyle coach, signing off. Bye, guys. You have so many options. You can watch more videos. You can subscribe for new videos every Monday. You can even join our Facebook group with an amazing support community.